Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. It's Thursday, September 17th. I'm Stephanie Haney. We've got your top headlines for you from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thanks for choosing to be here to get filled in on what's going on here in Ohio and everything you need to know to get up to speed for your day. And it is game day. It is hard to believe it's game day again already, but we had that quick turnaround this week. We've taken on the Cincinnati Bengals tonight. We'll get more into that in just a minute what the Cleveland Browns need to do to succeed. First, we're going to talk about some very upsetting new studies that have released some information here, particularly for the state of Ohio. There was a press conference this morning here in Cleveland by Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson and other city leaders. And one of the things that they addressed is new data released from the U.S. Census Bureau's American Community Survey, which has designated Cleveland as the poorest big city in America. Definitely not a designation that you want to have. Here's what Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson said about it. He said that poverty is an ongoing situation and that he could imagine if we talked about this 100 years ago or 200 years ago that we'd be talking about some of the same questions surrounding poverty. According to Mayor Frank Jackson, the real issue is how do we ensure that everyone can participate in the quality of life and the prosperity that we create here? He says if we have policies or we have institutional behavior in place that stops people from being able to participate in that prosperity and quality of life, then you're going to have poverty. Of course, if you're putting barriers up, yes, absolutely, you're going to have people who are denied those things, who are denied access to things. Yes, that's going to result in poverty. So Mayor Frank Jackson says that's why institutionalized things such as inequities, disparities, and racism are major issues that we have to address if we want to eliminate poverty, crime, and other negative things that are going on socially in the United States and in Cleveland in particular. So not necessarily addressing the fact that Cleveland has been designated the poorest big city in the U.S., but talking broadly about poverty with broad strokes about the things that we need to fight in order to do away with poverty at a broader level. Another thing that they talked about in the press conference today is the IX Center, which we found out yesterday will be closing by the end of the year. Now, that is owned by the city of Cleveland. It had been leased by IX Center Corporation. They've been running the day-to-day operations for the last 35 years, but the city of Cleveland owns the IX Center. So Mayor Frank Jackson says that he can't guarantee the IX Center will continue to operate the way it has over those past 35 years, but he said the city will definitely do its due diligence to find out what is the highest and the best use and will be the greatest benefit to Cleveland moving forward using the facility that is the IX Center. Chief of Regional Development Edward Ripka did say that the 75 employees at the IX Center will be paid through November 15th with benefits, so just under two months that they have to sort of get things in order and get their affairs in order. Very unfortunate for those employees of the IAC Center. Very unfortunate for the community. The IAC Center has been a true institution here. Ribka said that the current lease expires in August of 2024, so they are looking for a future tenant for the IAC Center and trying to figure out what the future of that looks like here in Ohio. Now we have another alarming study to talk to you about. This was a study of Ohio millennials and Generation Z, Gen Z, and the Holocaust. This was conducted by the Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany, which goes by the Claims Conference. Gideon Taylor, the president of that organization, said that the results are both shocking and saddening, and they underscore why we must act now while Holocaust survivors are still with us to voice their stories. So The gist of this study was that 64% of Ohio millennials and members of Gen Z didn't know that 6 million Jewish people were killed during the Holocaust during World War II. Gideon says this needs to serve as a wake-up call to all of us and as a roadmap of where government officials need to act. So I'm going to run down some of the other findings of that study. A lot of numbers here, but just very alarming results of this study. 48% couldn't name one of the 40,000 concentration camps from World War II. Gideon Taylor said that in regards to Ohio, the very specific survey findings are particularly stunning. As I said, 64% of Ohio respondents didn't know that 6 million Jewish people were killed during the Holocaust. 
half of those people said that they had seen Holocaust denial or distortion information on social media. 12% said in here in Ohio that they thought Jewish people caused the Holocaust. <clears throat> Excuse me. Caused the Holocaust. 37% couldn't identify that the Holocaust was associated with World War II and 23% said that they believed the number of Jewish people killed had been greatly exaggerated, was a myth, or they weren't sure about it. 14%, this is particularly alarming, said that they believed it was acceptable to hold neo-Nazi views. Now, let me break this down for you. Neo-Nazi views are promoting hatred and attacking minorities, and in some cases, promoting a fascist state. So fascist gets thrown out a lot. Fascism gets thrown out a lot. What is fascism? Fascism is the belief in nationalism, which is the promotion of the nation and often a particular race above individuals. And also authoritarianism. This would be like a dictatorship. This is a situation where a leader has absolute power without constitutional limitations and also supports a situation where you can put down opposition by force, including using force against a country's own people in order for that leader to maintain power. Now, in this study, it was also found that 59% say they've seen Nazi symbols in their community or on social media in the last five years. Half of the people surveyed believed that something like the Holocaust could happen again. 66% in Ohio here believe that Holocaust education should be required in school. And 81% say it's important to keep teaching about the Holocaust in part so that it does not happen again. And as Gideon said, while Holocaust survivors are still alive, it's important to tell their stories and hear their stories. We have more links to this on WKYC.com and in our WKYC app. Now, in the religious community, there was a very big day here on Monday in Cleveland. The new bishop for the area of Cleveland, Edward Malezik, talked exclusively with R3 News' Rutch Mitchell. He was installed as Cleveland area's top Roman Catholic leader on Monday. His installation mass was held at the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. Now, Bishop Malesic comes to us from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, where he served for five years. Here in Cleveland, he is replacing Nelson J. Perez, who Pope Francis appointed as Archbishop of Philadelphia earlier this year. Now, before Bishop Malesic came here to Cleveland, he did talk with now Archbishop Perez, and he said that Perez found his two and a half years here to be some of the best of his priesthood. Malesic said that he was nervous when he was appointed to Cleveland, which is a bigger city than where he came from, but that Perez assured him that he would really enjoy it here. Now, Malesic talked about some of the bigger issues facing the church, like divisions in the church with people falling along either conservative or progressive lines. Malesic said he likes to call himself faithful. He says other people can label him how they want, but at the end of the day, the Lord's not going to ask him whether he was conservative or progressive. Malesic said he's going to ask me whether I followed him, picked up my cross, and was faithful to the gospel. And Malesic had a special message to believers right now while we're dealing with COVID-19 and so many other issues. He said, we're going to pick up this cross, the cross of COVID-19. We're going to follow with the Lord and we'll find victory. He said, we'll get through this and it's easier to get through it together than alone. If you would like to watch Bishop Malesic's entire installation mash, you can do that on WKYC.com. We have that linked in there. Now let's move to sports. Today is game day. The Cleveland Browns are taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. It's the home opener at First Energy Stadium. That's happening tonight. Our three new sports analyst, Ben Axelrod, put together three keys to victory. Normally we would have Ben come on and we would talk about this, but Ben is getting a later start today because he'll be covering the game tonight. So we're going to walk you through Ben Axelrod's three keys to victory. He says it's important that the Browns be on the same page. He's particularly talking about the lack of chemistry between quarterback Baker Mayfield and star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. that we saw in Sunday's not-so-great loss to the Baltimore Ravens. And 
new head coach Kevin Stefanski falls into that too. So Stefanski says you really have to start with the players and give them credit. He said they made some plays. A couple balls, he's sure Baker wants back, and a couple routes, he's sure Odell wants back. That's sort of the nature of this thing. Now what Beckham had to say about it was that Sunday, obviously, wasn't what we wanted. Nobody wanted to lose 38-6 to to the Ravens in the season opener, but Beckham says more game reps will be the way to go so they can get more comfortable. And Mayfield says that the chemistry has to come naturally obviously you plan he says to put things in place so that you get the ball in your playmakers hands referring to Odell and the other major playmakers on the team but when it comes to game time there are going to be certain situations that may not be able to make that possible so one of the keys here getting everybody on the same page in the Browns organization another thing is to overcome the possibility of Joe Burrow having a breakout game now he was the number one pick in the 2020 NFL draft the Bengals also lost on Sunday but not by as much it was a 16 to 13 loss to the Los Angeles Chargers so in Ben's analysis, he says if the Browns are going to avoid starting the season 0-2, we have to do everything possible to prevent Burrow from breaking loose and having a breakout game. Head coach Kevin Stefanski called Burrow a really good young player. He said he had a good college career, as good of a year as you can have, and that he's a really special player. Stefanski said that we saw that on the rushing touchdown. He's got great movement skills, and he can make the throws, and that the Browns have the work cut out for them. One more thing to watch out for, the kicking game. This would be a particular sore spot. So, little recap here. As we know, Austin Seibert, who kicked for the Browns on Sunday, didn't make a great showing. He missed his only two attempts. He missed a point after touchdown, and he missed a field goal attempt. Well, the Browns cut him, and they promoted Cody Parkey from the practice squad. So, he'll be the kicker for the Browns tonight at First Energy Stadium. But... In a dramatic twist of events, the Cincinnati Bengals picked up Austin Seibert after their kicker, Randy Bullock, got injured on Sunday kicking against the Chargers. So we will see Austin Seibert probably starting for the Bengals tonight in First Energy Stadium. It would be a terrible tragedy for the Browns to end up losing this game by a field goal at the foot of Austin Seibert or by a point after touchdown or something and coach Stefanski was asked about this he said no it's not worrisome he's not worried about it but I'm sure if you are like me that is in your head as a Browns fan so let's just hope that doesn't happen to us tonight when the Browns take on the Bengals so here's what you need to know about the game yes it's a quick turnaround Baker says the quick turnaround means that you just can't dwell on the negative. He says they're not going to beat themselves up throughout the week. There's too much to focus on. There's a lot to learn from the game on Sunday, so they don't necessarily want to forget it. But you improve, you learn from it, you get better moving forward. So that's the mentality that our quarterback has going into tonight's game against the Bengals, which is at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time at First Energy Stadium here in downtown Cleveland. To watch it, you will need the NFL Network or you can stream it live at CBS All Access or you can listen on the radio on ESPN 850, 92.3 The Fan or 98.5 WNCX and we'll have live updates all throughout the game on WKYC.com and our WKYC app and of course follow us along on Twitter as well for all of those live game updates. That's it for your 3 News Now early update for Thursday, September 17th. I'll be back here at 3 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health and all of the other stories that are topping the headlines on WKYC.com. Everyone stay safe, be well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I'll see you back here shortly. I'm Stephanie Haney.